So the first floor layout for me, you'll see I've put additional foundations here with gates. That's a personal preference. For me, I would do that for the first two floors and put a roof on top of it. It's just something I've, I've tended to always do, just so if you do get door camped, there's less chance of them getting to you straight away. We take you through each section, it's just going to be literally an armoured door. I'll probably put a trap there, or i put a drop box in that section. You come through this area here, this will be your fireman's slide to your left. Furnace is here with the double stacked doors. That's double stacked at the moment because as you got further your loot rooms will be in there. Um, so I'm just utilising this space where it is. Also with three sets of these, with it being all symmetrical, you can have plenty of furnaces downstairs just smashing out charcoal. And here I've just made like a simple respawn area with a large box and a locker, sleeping bag and a fire. You see the cupboards in the centre, it's all locked up. As I mentioned, you've got all the furnaces in those areas. Nice and secure. Um, everything is completely symmetrical. The layouts are exactly the same. I'll drop out so you can see the exact layout it's going to be. You can see the, the actual frame for the ladder hatch there as well. That will be a double jump. Then you'll come across one back towards the south of the base as you're looking at it now. And that will be the drop into the second floor. This area here will just be all honeycomb for the time being. We're not going to utilise this until the third floor. Um, this is more of a deterrent to stop you getting in. And when you come into the towers for defending, they'll come into the use further up. The second floor is pretty much all honeycomb, really, apart from the central piece. The double jump that came up from the bottom. Now, if there'll be a door frame in place in the third floor that takes you down to this door, to all these hatches, just to the left of them. These just lead into a room. I want to utilise this space again, like I did in the last builds. Just a little drop box, but this area is primarily to get through to the other sections. So if you're getting heavily hit in one section, but you're in another section, you can quickly and securely get through by using this area. Remember the door frames though, because um, that will keep stability as you go up. As you can see, I've still utilised these spaces for the fireman slides. And this will be the last section of height that I'd use the cages. I'll put a roof piece on there. Now just to tie it in so people can't jump in from above. So the third floor for me is really when the towers come into play. You'll see now that from the double jumps there's doors leading in to the actual towers. In all the honeycomb I've utilised that area and put furnaces in every section. I've only done one entrance to the centrepiece with the second cupboards in place. Just remember for your second cupboard you have to destroy the one in the bottom floor, then put this in place, then redo the one in the bottom floor and seal it up. I've got two boxes locked in here. They're simply just for charcoal and metal frags from the furnaces. You'll see a bit of a change of shape in how I do the rest of it now. I'm going to start using these squares here as living areas and this central piece is now going to become a central loot room as we go higher up. I'll start honeycombing this section again as we go up as well. So the fourth floor is going to be probably the most secure floor for, in terms of your loot. You see in the towers I've actually changed up a little bit from what I was going to do. I've put bedrooms in each of the towers. Their own little lockers, a little box, just a bed. Each one is exactly the same. As you can see there, there's double stacked doors as well to get into them. So even if it's compromised and they come through this side, you've got two doors to get through as well. I would say put armoured doors there if you can. See the fireman slides are still there as well. These will be the hatches leading up to the next floor. Now, because it's in a triangle, it's a bit more difficult to actually do this centrepiece. So I've put the double stacked doors into a metal window debrasier to get into the box from behind so if they come through this section they're going to have to go through two sets of double walls to get there anyway plus a window frame on this side I've put the armour door and a window frame behind it as well you can reach into all those boxes easily and get all that stuff it's not a problem I would suggest putting code locks on it as well so they actually have to try and damage the boxes to get anything out if they don't take the walls down beforehand all that looks just get dropped to the floor and they won't get it so you can lay this out as you want. I mean, for me, this this is like the main secure area. 
for your primary loot for the next floor this wall will be sealed up because we're going up to really the defending areas now for when we're getting attacked or raided so we want to try to close this down as much as possible this wall will be metal on top as well so people can't pick down As I mentioned, the next floor up is going to be the defending floor. You can see that the towers are back in play, giving you full view. I've also incorporated windows in this area, so you can see in front of the doors as well. This is basically like your viewing areas if you are getting raided, to try and sneakily catch them out before they catch you out. Yeah, there's no loot really in this area. Um, I would put double doors in these areas or door frames, it's up to you. I've just went for this for stability so you can see all the way through as well. This will be the last floor where the fireman list for me will come into play. As we move up to the roof area, you'll see that it's a lot more flattened out. A lot more will come into play as well. It's up to you how you do the roof area. Um, people have got preferences. I always try and make it so you can fight the heli or defend raids. That's the primary goal for me. As I said, the roof's completely up to you how you do it. I chose to do it this way simply because if you want to fight the heli now it's just napalm, you want the f safe areas really where the fire's not going to get in too much. If you're lucky enough for it to come in from the sides with this, it's just going to roll down the roofs into these front sections. If it comes in from this side, then it's going to take those two areas out, yes, but with the central column here, this room, you should be able to get out the other side quite safe. I've used stone barricades rather than putting roof pieces at the front um, just to give you a better view. Uh, the roof pieces here are so we can get a bit of cover from the heli as well and get an easy run in back to that safe area. So the roof is completely up to you how you would do it. Um, for me this is just how I chose in this build how to do it. But you might have a preferred preference. You might not even want to have a roof like this at all and you might just want to make it another floor or you want to just make it flat out just so you can get access to it, just have half walls all around about it, it's completely up to you how you design the roof. For me, it was just built in the purpose of fighting the heli or defending a raid and giving you vantage points.